Hello and welcome to the discussion around 100% rated circuit breakers and 80% or otherwise known as standard rated circuit breakers. We will begin with a brief introduction to the power pack family of circuit breakers from Schneider Electric, highlighting the difference between catalog numbers for 100% rated circuit breakers and standard rated 80% circuit breakers. After that we will discuss the National Electrical Code and UL Standard 489 to help better understand the difference between 100% rated circuit breakers and 80% standard rated circuit breakers. After that we will do some load calculations and examples to help in design and selection around 100% and standard rated circuit breakers. In the world of molded case circuit breakers, there has been some confusion and misunderstanding of the terms 100% rated and 80% rated circuit breakers. In this presentation, the focus will be on understanding the origin of the terminology, the effects on selection and design, and some circuit breaker design examples. Schneider Electric today offers a complete range of molded case circuit breakers. The power pack family in the digest shows two options for ordering the circuit breaker a part number with a C suffix and a part number without. The C suffix denotes that the circuit breaker is 100% rated. The lack of a C suffix in the part number means it's standard rated or otherwise known as 80%. But what does that mean? Let's discuss how the NEC and UL set the rules about 100% and 80% ratings. According to the 2011 National Electrical Code, the rating of the overcurrent device shall not be less than the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. There is an exception. This exception allows for 100% rated breakers to be used in equipment tested and listed for 100% rating, which has led to the phrases 100% rated breakers and 80% rated breakers. UL specifies tests that must be conducted to obtain listings for continuous operation at 100% of the rated current. Additionally, another section from the National Electrical Code discusses the minimum feeder circuit conductor size. In short, this article says that a standard 80% rated breaker and the equipment that it's installed in and the connection wires have to be rated at the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. In contrast, 100% tested and rated circuit breakers and equipment can carry 100% of the sum of the continuous and non-continuous loads. Another restriction applying to 100% rated circuit breakers can be found in the National Electrical Code. The code states where the assembly, including the overcurrent devices protecting the feeders, is listed for operation at 100%. This says it is not just the circuit breaker that must be 100% rated, rather the entire installation must be suitable for 100% operation. Switchboard manufacturers do not label their enclosures as either 100% or standard rated. Instead, a switchboard is suitable to have 100% rated circuit breakers installed and applied at 100% if the minimum enclosure and ventilation requirements set forth on the circuit breakers are met or the switchboard has been specifically UL tested for 100% operation of the circuit breaker. In enclosures that are supplied with standard rated circuit breakers, it is not necessarily possible to replace a standard rated circuit breaker with a 100% rated circuit breaker and obtain 100% rating. The enclosure must meet the minimum enclosure and ventilation requirements of the circuit breaker and be marked as such. When applying 100% rated circuit breakers, there are several UL and NEC restrictions which must be kept in mind. If any of these restrictions are not met, the 100% rated circuit breaker becomes a standard and must be applied at the sum of the non-continuous loads plus 125% of the continuous load. Load calculations. When deciding to use standard or 100% rated circuit breakers, the solution is not always a clear-cut decision. The following steps will simplify making this decision. Examine loads to determine if they are primarily continuous loads or non-continuous loads. If all loads are non-continuous, then both a standard and a 100% rated circuit breaker can be used at 100% of the load and the standard circuit breaker would be the most economical option. However, if some or all of the loads are continuous, a 100% rated circuit breaker may be the best option. 
Where possible, segment each distribution circuit into all continuous loads or all intermittent loads. By doing this, the choice of a 100% rated circuit breaker or a standard rated circuit breaker will become a clear cut for each circuit. Determine the total load on each branch circuit and calculate the ampere rating required for the circuit breaker and conductor using a both standard rated breaker and a 100% rated circuit breaker. Compare the cost of the circuit breaker and conductor for the 100% rated circuit breaker to that of the standard rated circuit breaker. The less expensive option is probably the wiser choice. Although, capability to handle load growth is an additional concern. Now let's take a look at some circuit design examples. The following example will help illustrate where the use of a 100% rated circuit breaker and an 80% rated circuit breaker can be done. In this example, there are two branch circuits being fed from the main circuit breaker as shown in the figure. Looking at circuit number one, when using a standard rated circuit breaker, the minimum required ampacity would be 150 amps times 1.25 derived from the national electrical code requirement of 125% loading plus 500 amps for the non-continuous load, which yields 687 amps. Because 687 amps is not a standard rating, a 700 amp conductor and circuit breaker would be required. On the other hand, when using a 100% rated circuit breaker, the minimum required ampacity would be simply adding 150 amps of the continuous load plus 500 amps of the non-continuous load, yielding 650 amps. Because 650 amps is not a standard rating as well, a 700 amp conductor and circuit breaker would be required. In this case, the 100% rated circuit breaker does not offer any savings to the end user. A standard rated or 80% rated circuit breaker is the most economical choice. Now let's take a look at circuit number 2. When using a standard rated circuit breaker in circuit number 2, the minimum required ampacity calculation would be 1000 times 1.25 yielding 1250 amps. Because 1250 amps is not an available rating, a 1400 amp circuit breaker would be required. Using a 100% rated circuit breaker on the other hand, the minimum required ampacity would simply be 1000 amps. A 1000 amp circuit breaker would be required. In this case, the 100% rated circuit breaker offers small frame size circuit breaker, which may reduce the size of the end user equipment and the space needed in the electrical room, plus smaller conductors. However, if load growth is expected in the circuit, the standard rated 1400 amp circuit breaker does have the capacity for 1120 amps or, in other words, 120 amps load growth. Finally, let's take a look at the main circuit breaker calculation. When using a standard rated circuit breaker, the minimum required ampacity would be 1000 times 1.25 plus 150 times 1.25 for all the continuous load downstream from the main circuit breaker, plus 500 amps for the non-continuous load which yields 1937 amps. The next standard rating for conductors and circuit breakers is 2000 amps. When using a 100% rated circuit breaker, the minimum required ampacity would be 1000 plus 150 plus 500, which yields 1650 amps. The next available size for circuit breakers and conductors is 1800 amps. When using the 100% rated circuit breaker, this results in project cost reductions for the end user. In this case, a saving will be realized in the price of the busway, switchboard busing and cable. In addition, the customer has the excess capacity of 150 amps for future load growth. To summarize, it is very important to know when to use and recommend 100% rated circuit breakers. Using 100% rated circuit breakers does not guarantee project savings all the time. When using 100% rated circuit breakers, one must keep in mind that in some cases, future load growth can be restricted. To use 100% rated circuit breakers, the entire system, including the equipment, must be listed for 100% operation.